UCLA football got another commit. And hey, it's a big weekend in recruiting. And will UCLA football actually get trounced by SC this year? All questions we talk about on Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Locked On UCLA podcast. I am Zach Anderson, Yox Simon, your favorite host, diehard UCLA fan, broadcaster, podcast host, everything in between. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the podcast and making it your first listen each every day. It's free wherever you get your podcasts. It's available on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe there. Follow Locked On Bruins and become an everyday listener because we talk football, basketball, and generally most things UCLA athletics. Today, we're going to get into... The big week that is UCLA recruiting, kind of hammer home and some more points. There's a tweet about if UCLA and SC will be a close game in football. And hey, if you're wondering, if you watch the show, if you watch the show and you're wondering, and if you're listening, you probably may have gone and seen comments. If you do both things, I had a mustache. And the big thing is, what happened to the mustache? We'll get to that and more. To start off, UCLA football had another recruit that committed at some point on May 24th that I missed when I dropped the podcast. But again, the point remains for UCLA football and Chip Kelly. While he isn't necessarily getting 25, he's not getting a bazillion five stars. He's not even getting a bunch of four stars right now. But Chip Kelly is making sure to get a bunch of commits, a bunch of players that he feels can develop and turn into those quality type products when UCLA transitions into the Big Ten. And who am I talking about? Well, UCLA had a couple of Washington products commit, and I believe I talked about this guy a few weeks ago or a week and a half ago, and it seemed like Isaiah Patterson, if you remember that name, was leaning to UCLA, a three-star linebacker. We'll get more on his numbers and his statistics in a moment. 6'3", he's a class of 24. He is already the fifth member of UCLA's 2024 class. And to give you an insight as to how their class is growing, right? Before they got Torp, Torp, Thorpe Taylor, Marquise Thorpe Taylor, and Isaiah Patterson, two recruits that they got over the last week or so, their recruiting class was amongst the 60th in the country. That's mediocre in FBS. Eighth in the Pac-12. I'm not entirely sure why, despite them moving into the Big Ten, their 2024 rankings are justified by Pac-12 rankings. But according to their West Coast foes for now, they were eighth in the Pac-12. And then in the NCAA, after these two commitments between getting that offensive lineman, I talked about Thorpe Taylor, a big 6'6", 315-pound lineman who they got just not too long ago. They vaulted with the linebacker and the offensive line commitments into the third best recruiting ranking as of now with their five commits in the Pac-12. And then they're now in the top 40, number 38 in the NCAA when it comes to the recruiting ranking. So they're shooting up. And as we always divulge and talk about, Chip Kelly does his best work generically almost all the time when it comes to the portal. So this recruiting class theoretically will look a lot better after the 2023 season when the Bruin players will most likely transfer out. Some sort of quarterback is going to leave after the year, whether it be going to the pros, going to another school as a grad transfer, whatever it may be. UCLA is going to have somebody transfer out because they have a lot of talent at a lot of positions and guys still have a COVID year potentially to burn. I'm not entirely sure. I forget, but they still have those red shirt years that they would like to use because the COVID years have stayed around so long. Now back to Isaiah Patterson. Who do they have in this class of 2024 commit who I, I, I missed his commitment? I, you know, so you can't see everything on Twitter. So I apologize if I missed it. This is a guy who has a linebacker, had a lot of West Coast offers, mostly kind of Western United States between Arizona State, Boise, BYU. Remember, BYU is going to the Big 12, Nevada, Oregon, Wazoo, Washington State. Pursued, quote-unquote, from Oklahoma, Oregon State, Texas. So some SEC schools there technically trying to go after this class of 24 linebacker. In the end, the tweet around noon at some point said, I'm home, I told you I was going to do it, was his tweet. Grandma, which is what he posted, did Isaiah Patterson on his Twitter at Zay Patterson 24. If you want to go follow him, 
And there's a scorebook live article, I believe I read a couple of days ago, that predicted and alluded to the fact that Patterson was going to be a Bruin, and he is. He went to the Polynesian Bowl, was an elite underclassman camp member in Northern California 2022, part of the ESPN 300 elite camp in high school. And in showcases, he was the SSC first team all league linebacker in the fall where he had 64 tackles, 11 tackles for loss, and eight sacks. In eight games, 6'3", 236-pound linebacker. And you would think with Ken Norton Jr. and a totally, we hope, revamped defensive presence for UCLA that the guys they're bringing in, they're going for their size. They see the intangibles, and they can work with that moving forward. That is the intent with, I believe, some of these recruits. So let's look at who the Bruins have already. Remember, you've got Dunbar Hawkins. You've got a lot of offensive linemen. Dunbar Hawkins is a four-star safety. Now you've got a linebacker in Isaiah Patterson. You're already hosting so many recruits this weekend. UCLA is stacking up where are the biggest things and biggest points of emphasis in the Big Ten. You've got to be big up front, and you can't have a terrible defense because as we've seen in the Big Ten, despite as entertaining or as lackluster as the games can be, if you have no defense, Ohio State, Michigan, whichever one of those two teams, another team in the Big Ten, they'll run all over you. They'll throw the ball around the gridiron, and they'll score on you all night long. Offensively, you've got to have enough protection. Patterson adds to the defensive side of the ball, where, as we've seen in recent years under UCLA, whether it was at the end of the Mora era or even, for the most part, during the Chip Kelly era, they need a significant defensive presence. And while they did force some turnovers last year, even the team across town has struggled with their defense, right? Whoever can have a good defense will have a very good year in the Pac-12. And yes, you've got to be able to score, but somebody has got to stop somebody, whether it be in 2023, and I know Patterson is in 2024, they've got to be able to stop the run when teams try to run it down their throat in late, cold, November, November-ish games in, in the college football season. So those are all big things for the Bruins. And again, I talked about Elijah Rushing coming over. He's a top 10 recruit. UCLA over Memorial Day weekend. From what I've read, I think it was a little teaser on the Bruin Report online. I caught eight recruits coming to Westwood. I know you get big holidays so families can travel and players like to take their official visits. So that's how you plan the official visits. But this is a huge weekend coming up for UCLA in their future. They can get a top 10 defensive edge, as I've already talked about with Rushing, who's coming over, making his first official visit, and chose UCLA to do so. I didn't really see who else is coming. Some players may take official visits even after they've committed. A lot of different variables for why players commit or don't or take official visits or say, hey, why not? UCLA football, this is a huge weekend. They keep stacking up some commits in the early going, and there will be some guys who probably decommit. We saw Roger Robinson who was their highest rated recruit heading into the class of 2023 off season for the most part. And then he decided to go to Georgia. So while they already got a list of five, that's good. It's awesome. It's dandy. That could change moving forward. That's all important to know. The Bruins have two Washington commits. Patterson comes through and we'll see what the Bruins recruiting class looks like after this Memorial day weekend coming up. Speaking of coming up UCLA football, some, some kind of, you know, Shade thrown out on Twitter by Big Game Boomer as to UCLA's ability to compete with USC in that football game this year. And while you could debate whether they're going to win the game or not, they say they're going to get blown out. Are they? We'll talk about it after I tell you more about the best, most comfortable shorts around. Bird dogs. I promise you, you're going to want to get some bird dog shorts. If you're looking on YouTube, if you're listening online, on any audio platform, go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college because these shorts, incredibly comfortable. Incredibly, incredibly comfortable. They make your legs look good. You wear them on a hot day. They feel comfortable. They are comfortable and they make you look good. You can wear them in any type of setting. A wedding. I dare you to wear bird dog shorts to weddings or even a date, whatever it may be. They're extremely comfortable and you're going to want to go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. If you put in the promo code locked on college, you get a free custom bird dogs yeti style tumbler with every order. Cruising on in locked on UCLA, Zach Anderson, Yock Simon with you guys once again. What's going to go on with UCLA football against USC football this year? Remember, they play at 
end of USC's regular season. I know the Trojans have lost their athletic director from what I've seen. I know I'm kind of not caught up on the news from the other side of town, but even I know that the Bruins are getting a lot of pieces written about Martin Germond after his big move alongside SC going to the Big Ten. And yet there's so many different things and factors, but the big thing we want to look at is UCLA versus USC football. Big game boomers Twitter. They always like to put up heated posts, get us yelling. And I got sucked in, and we're going to talk about it. The top 50 games were ranked in terms of which rivalry matchup or big in-conference matchup, for the most part, top 50 games between FBS opponents would result in blowouts. And UCLA was on that list when it came to playing USC at USC at the end of the season. So in terms of the top 50 games this year, no, we're not talking between an Alabama or some nasty whatever it is. The the prompt is the top 50 projected blowouts in college football this season. Although the only matchups they have are conference matchups, generally between in-conference rivals, a couple non-conference games, but these are all FBS teams. So they think, think so lowly of US, UCLA, so highly of Caleb Williams and Lincoln Riley that they expect USC to absolutely blow out UCLA in, in late November. The 46th worst game they expect between FBS opponents. So they're thinking this game won't even be close. And while we have to remember a couple of factors, SC retained their defensive coordinator. You know, even looking at other shows and, you know, seeing about what the SC fans they're just as frustrated about their defense, just as UCLA fans have been for quite some time. I know Bill McGovern is a different type of story, and the transition to Danton Lynn brings a lot of hope for UCLA. How much can change from the end of McGovern into, you know, because they went from Asanero, you go to McGovern, and then you go into Danton Lynn. A lot of transition these last couple of years, coming out of COVID, a couple of new defensive coordinators, and now UCLA has got to play some defense. Will they truly be blown out by SC with it being at the Coliseum? It's been a while since, you know, there's been a non-COVID UCLA SEC game, UCLA USC game at the Coliseum 2021 technically, but both teams are out of the running. It won't be as hyped up as it will be. It'll be SC's regular season finale for the Bruins. Uh, we we have to admit it that game will probably be something equivalent to a a title game for UCLA. That that's just the honest opinion. We can't can't really sit here and say anything else. Yet I don't think that game is not going to be. I don't think that game will end up being in UCLA's favor. I have to be quite honest at this moment, without knowing who the quarterback is, truly who's starting each position. But I'm not entirely certain with the talent that UCLA has on this roster that they should be so so heavily betted against by the time that game's line comes out i'm fairly confident there might be more people putting money on ucla i know that could be kind of counterintuitive depending on how wide that line is they haven't given any crazy lines at the moment i think they had a line for ucla's opening game against coastal carolina yet i i, I forget what the number was but ucla is at least a, a close to a two touchdown favorite if not a three touchdown favorite i was I forgot what the number was. UCLA SC, a lot of factors riding in. The Bruins on the road could be a true freshman quarterback, could be a senior quarterback or a longtime veteran who hasn't played in that game, or a newcomer in Colin Schley who's taking the snaps from behind center, dare I say under center in today's shotgun, you know, option heavy, crazy offensive day and age in college football. I'm not sure USC blows out UCLA, or even if the score is, you know, two touchdown game. I, I think UCLA will compete, certainly. That's the obvious thing. The rivalry games get bring out the best, and Big Game Boomer likes to throw out whatever it may be. And, and even, hey, I, I got to applaud, what, Bruin Report Online's Mike Recalado, who I, I, maybe I butchered his name. I don't want to butcher his name anymore. But on Twitter, he's like, they underestimate. They're all, all UCLA fans. We've got the, in terms of UCLA fans, we have one corner who's so... You know, we got to be honest as UCLA fans. We've got one corner of fans who are just so dismally pessimistic. And then we've got all, like the 2% of UCLA fans so incredibly optimistic that when the pessimism comes in, you see a Jalen Clark get hurt. You see a Dembona out for the Gonzaga game. You see UCLA get high in the rankings in college football in 22, and you still expect the worst. We can't be expecting the worst 
for UCLA athletics moving forward. We can't be that pessimistic. We got to be optimistic, and I'm optimistic. I'm pretty confident in their chances to make that a competitive game against USC later this year. The defense will have to step up. They'll have to play the game of their lives with still players who have to slot in to Danton Lynn's defense with a new couple of readjusted roles on the coaching staff. And you've got the reigning Heisman winner on the other side. Yes, I get all that. you got Lincoln Riley. You've got all the glitz and the glamour. I say those words, but it's it's across the street, across town from you know Westwood, Pasadena, to downtown Los Angeles. I'm just not so sure SC is going to blow out the Bruins. You can tell me otherwise. You can, you can hit it in the comments and be like, Zach, it's not going to be close. I would disagree. I'm not saying they can win that game at this moment, considering we don't even know who the starting quarterback is, but I'm still confident in by the, what the Bruins will be at the end of the season that they should be able to compete even in a true road environment at the Coliseum. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. In the meantime, we're going to cruise into the end of Locked On UCLA, kind of personal segment, you know, kind of a little personal segue to end this show. If you're wondering what happened to the mustache, right? You're like, Zach, you, you came in, you're a hot and fiery one day, you just randomly showed up on YouTube wearing a mustache, or if you're listening to the show, you got to go to YouTube, had a two-episode, three-episode stint with, with a, a big, burly mustache. We went to a fad family gathering, a family event celebrating a, a graduation over the weekend, and then I got the vote, not a vote of confidence, an absolute multiple votes of no from the family. They looked at me, they saw the mustache, and it was like, thumbs down, thumbs down. It was, it was a no. It was, it's like some of you who are going to go to this video and click the dislike button, if you could do that for the mustache, many of you might have done that. That's what I got. And maybe they would have loved the mustache if it stayed on long enough. But when you take family photos representing a big moment in our, you know, big family picture, representing a fun, nice graduation for my grandfather from school uh, over the weekends, and my mother's like, you're not having a mustache in the family picture. And you wonder, why, Zach? You're a grown adult, and you end up having a mustache and you fall to your mother's will. I did. I, you know, I had to, the mustache ended up falling off the face. The caterpillar is gone, but it can be back. We'll see. But if you're wondering what happened to the stash, went to a family event, And because we didn't, we, we quotes, we didn't want to have a mustache in the picture it was told to be gone. And this was a last second decision. I waited to the last moment before the graduation. We literally hopped in the car. The mustache was still there. I fought for it. And in the end, you could debate if the mustache is better off, if it's better with a beard, or if I should be clean shaven and never have facial hair again. Whatever. That's all goofy personal story and interjection just to say the mustache is gone. And that is why it is no longer a part of the getup. Thanks for tuning in to Locked On UCLA. You should become an everyday listener, right? You download the podcast if you're listening audio-wise, if you want to watch it on YouTube. If you do both, thank you for the support. Thanks for tuning in to each and every episode. There will be big basketball news coming up. I don't have that now. The players are still building their cases, whether they become an NBA player. Dream on for the draft. Is it Bona and Clark? Bona or Clark? Is it a new international player that we still don't know of that could be a last-minute ad? For the most part, all signs laid toward a day, toward a day Mara. And then UCLA football is hosting eight recruits, as I talked about at the beginning of the episode. We're going to talk about that coming up. And then UCLA baseball, they're in the midst of a Pac-12 tournament run. While that recording of this episode and by the release of the episode, there will not be any determination, at least from my understanding, as to if they move on or not. And I know there's so many different things we can talk about, but basketball, football will be on the forefront of our minds because 2024 is coming sooner than later. Big 10 move and UCLA's 2023 season to 2024 in basketball, all dependent on what these players decide and if they can solidify some commitments and make sure they don't get spurned by a late decommitment or a, a late switching, a changing of heart from somebody else despite deciding, hey, I'm going to go G League or I'm going to go to the NBA or say Demar doesn't want to go to UCLA, that would be crushing, even though none of those things are set in stone. That's why you want to stay with Locked On UCLA. We're going to talk about it, dissect it, and be as happy and energetic as always. I'm Zach Anderson, your Oxheimer, signing off with Locked On UCLA. Hands up, Bruins fans. Eight clap time, baby. And one.
two, three, four, five, six, seven, A, U, C, L, A, U, C, L, A, fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.